Hey YouTube, Alien2049655 here. I've been recently solved a problem, or at least partially solved a problem, that I've been dealing with with Space Engineers. Not a problem with the game itself. It's awesome. And they're putting out updates every day to fix the little bugs and issues that it has. But the issue that I've been having is ever since the update where the uh, Gatling turrets and missile turrets are active, I've had a fairly difficult time capturing ships. The only one I was able to get with that new update was the private sail because it's the only unarmed ship in the entire game. But there's, it does have loot, it does have a reactor, and it's got a hull made of iron which you, or steel, which you can use to build other ships. It's even got solar panels, which I use them just for looks anyway, so. But anyhow, the Gatling and missile turrets have been giving me problems. And with one ship, I've solved the problem. Everybody knows, and probably loves this particular ship I'm about to mention. It's my personal favorite. It's got the, the most resources on board. It is one of the one of the two biggest ships in the game. Well, one of the three. The business shipment, the big double sailed one, is also considered a big ship. Even though that its primary hull is pretty small. Anyhow, the mine hauler. The mining hauler actually. I know how to capture that thing mostly intact using just a grinder, a small fighter ship, and my spacesuit. Oh, and some uranium. You'll need some fuel. And here's why. Everybody has flown up behind these things and knows what the ass end of these things look like, right? You got a couple of fenders that are surrounding uh, a, collect a cluster of four large thrusters in the rear. One of them's already inactive. That's how it is when the when the um, ship spawns. But right in between the uh, diagonal gray stanchions that go in like this, there's a yellow bulbous area right in the middle in the rear rear ass end of this thing. Down low on the flat pane facing you. Down low here. Picture this as that panel, the yellow panel. Down low, right about here, is where the booby trap used to be on that ship, which you know that there's also a large reactor there. I used, it took me about 12 missiles. I had a full load of 80, no, no conveyor system, just mis loaded the launchers themselves. And I, uh, about, oh, let's see, 10 of them missed. I was firing one missile at a time. I had the the weapon selection mode, so I'd fire one missile at a time. I closed within 1,200 uh, meters of it, disengaged my inertial dampers on my fighter, and tried to match the speed, uh, get up to about a thousand, or down to about a thousand meters, and then ma match the speed, trying to st stay out of the range of those guns. But yet, you can still see the red dot in your reticle for your missile launcher. For your missile, yeah, your rocket launcher. And then I shoot it right here. Because I look at it and it looks like the back of my hand like this. It's even got, my hand's even got some of the contour here. And you shoot it right here. You blow, shoot it once uh, once or twice to blow through the bulkhead. To expose the reactor. And then one more missile to take out the reactor itself. Yes, you are throwing away a majorly big resource. I mean, large reactors are big and expensive to make. But chances are you've spawned into a world that where there's already a station in place and Big Red is there and he's got two large reactors himself. If you want a large reactor you can just cannibalize Big Red. Or just take, take apart Big Blue and use his components to build a new reactor. Anyway, that killed, taking out that reactor kills the guns, kills the engines, everything. In survival mode, that'll stop the ship cold as far as it trying to kill you. Then what I do is, right above this area, there's a, la a landing deck. People have seen this, probably from a distance. It looks like a, a white zero with a gray line through it. And you land, land there with your inertial dampers off. That's one of the tricky parts. you got to land there and settle there. Watch out for the missile turret because it'll get in your way. 
I mean, it's it's dead weight from that point on, but it, it's in your flight path. And just land. Now, I accidentally took out the uh, landing pad doors by accidentally hitting my missile button while I was trying to exit my ship, so I had to end up flying with no inertial dampers in my suit over to the front over to the front right of the um, of the ship where there's a bulbous section that's kind of like a Millennium Falcon-esque cockpit there anyway it's right behind that headlamp if you look at it from the front it's the only headlamp it's got it's got a big old spotlight right on the front of that pot I cut in drop in there and I do four things uh, I'll, let, I'll correct myself if I turn out to be wrong. Number one, go into the console, turn off every single weapon system on the ship. Don't even bother with the settings. What's fastest for me is I group them together and then shut them off by groups. Or I actually clump them together as a group. Uh, missile turrets, Gatling turrets, interior turrets, and I just make them so I can flip them off with a single click. Then what I next thing I do is I engage the inertial dampers now. I, I know what you're saying. It's not going to do anything while the ship is powered down. But it will once you power the ship back up. Most people that have tangled with this ship, even before the uh, Gatling gun update, knows that there's a secondary reactor on the right, uh, left front, right by the beacon. You get exit out the hole you cut into the cockpit. Fly over to there. And the only way to get... To that reactor to fuel it is to remove at least one block from underneath it so you can fly in there and put your uranium that I told you to bring along in there and, and then voila you have minimal power on the ship and you also have gravity you have thrusters and the best part is no guns shooting at you and the ship is already in the process of stopping because the gravity is restore, er, restored I would recommend to immediately turn off your jet pack rather than try to fiddle around for your inertial dampers because the gravity will pull you down to the deck and you won't fly off the ship once you, once you power it back up okay because inertial dampers are going to kick in on that ship and you're going to go slamming right into the wall so disengage your your flight pack first or your suit or your jet pack first then engage your inertial dampers and climb your way out of that hole I go to the left of the reactor as you're facing the front of the, or the right of the reactor as you're facing the front of the ship. The beacon's at my left and behind. I cut one block down and one block underneath and I put about two kilograms of uranium in there, just enough to give it enough power to fly it back to base. Now, you will redline the reactor and I found out if you redline the reactor too long, it'll explode. Now, the way of getting around that is to accelerate up to a reasonable speed after you get the ship pointed in the direction you want, usually towards your home base beacon, which your platform beacon, and hold your th hold your speed while turning off the inertial dampers, and then you just let the ship coast until you get to oh I'd say about 200 meters from base, and then you turn the dampers back on and fly it in, find a place to park it. And from that point on, you've got a 80% intact mine hauler. And all it cost you was a couple of missiles and a reactor. So, and a little bit of uranium. Although I retrieved that right away as soon as I, as soon as I got it back to base, because I was. There's two things you can do with a ship like that. You can fix it up, replace the large reactor that was in it, fix the hull around it. Um, repair any thrusters you may have damaged in the process repair or replace any thrusters I should say and then just uh, or and just make it a mobile mining platform or you park it it was in your base's gravity well and you pull it apart as you need to I don't typically pull apart a ship right off the bat I mean I only I only go to it when I know it has a resource that I need right at that moment, and then I'll go in and pull that particular piece of the ship apart. Otherwise, it's going to be a, a hulk, a, a big yellow hulk floating in space, and the only thing holding it in place is its inertial dampers. So, and unless I actually need all that steel, which that thing has a lot of steel, 
you could probably build two or three ships, a two or three smaller of the large ship variety uh, from that one ship. Also, somebody once told me it has three refineries. I've only ever seen two. One of them incomplete. Uh, one of them's always processing ore, and that's number four when you're taking the ship, is turn off that refinery because it eats power. And I mean it eats a lot of power. It'll cause you to redline your reactor really quick. Um, it also allows you to get a little more speed out of the engines because you're not dumping the power into the refinery. Park it at base, clean it out of its goodies, including all the bullets and missiles for its turrets. You can even take out the turrets itself. It has a good supply of motors. Um, and just slowly pe uh, do whatever you wish with the ship. Now in creative, now this is, I'm running out of time here so I'll be quick about this. In creative, that little reactor behind the beacon is always active because you know, as you know in creative, the reactors don't have to have fuel in them to function. Even if you take out that big reactor, the ship is still going to be active. The guns will still shoot at you. So while maintaining that, that 9 to 1,000 meter distance, you have to angle your ship down and then hover up above it get, and get right over where the beacon is, making sure you're close enough that you can see the laser dots for your missile launcher and take out that secondary reactor. Because in creative you can always plant a new reactor. But in creative you won't die either. You're better off just flying out there in space suit and, and fighting and battling your way through the barrage of missiles and bullets. But I find that that's more annoying than, than lethal. So I would just take out the two reactors, kill the ship, go on board, go to the bridge or any console. You can even walk up to a cargo container and access the uh, the turret controls and shut them off. Hell, you can go to door controls and do it. And just shut all the turrets off. And then you just plant the reactor. Go up to the bridge. And then you just plant the reactor or repair one that may be sort of there, but you kind of effed it up. And just go engage the inertial dampers and fly home. I haven't figured out how to get the military uh, transporters yet. That's it's about a, the same equivalent size as the mining hauler. It's got just as many guns, and the armor's the armor's heavy armor, so it's three times as tough. So I don't know where the main reactors for that are yet. Otherwise, I would load out with four missile launchers, fully packed. Don't need any extra. That would give me about 1,600 rockets, or 16 or 160 rockets, excuse me, and just start punching through that armor until I hit its reactor. And it, I believe that ship has two small reactors right near the cockpit. If you can take out those reactors, you kill the guns. And in creative, you just bring a reactor, uh, you just place down a reactor after you kill the guns, you know, turn them off. In survival mode, you'll need to carry the supplies to build a reactor on site. Now, in the back of that thing, there is a landing bay. That'd be a great place to, to plant a, a new reactor. Uh, once you take out the main reactors and take out the guns, the process is simple. You do those four things. You shut the guns off, engage inertial dampers, shut off any extraneous power draining equipment, and then go plant or build a reactor. And then voila, you've got control of the ship. Now as soon as I figure out roughly from the exterior where those reactors are, I'm going to be taking out the mine transporters. And we're coming up on 15 minutes. YouTube only lets me post that much, so I'll talk to you later. As soon as I can find the button.